Welcome to this podcast on software update management and the related software update management system. My name is Christoph Ebert. I'm the Managing Director of Vector Consulting Services, and I will give you a short overview here on what is SUMS, as it is called, the Software Update Management System, and specifically, what is the relationship to the homologation of a vehicle, and also what are the legal impacts, especially the new UNECE regulation R156 and the dependency on R155. At Vector, we have been in the business of uh, software updates since many years. We have been working with our diagnostics tools. We work on OBD, on OTA more recently, and of course, also on anything which relates to cybersecurity in the scope of software updates of the vehicles. Increasingly, the vehicle is not a standalone. We have a lot of connectivity, which is also what you see here in the background, connectivity, especially to servers, which provide updated functions, which allow to activate specific services, et cetera. So in a nutshell, update management is getting really crucial, like with any computer, because here we have a safety critical system with connectivity. And this is a difference to normal IT systems, which are normally not safety critical, and uh, here is the reason why the UNECE takes so much care that vehicles get secure and safe software updates. Now, this software update management system has a lot of uh, specific relationship, but a key topic is the relationship towards different standards. In various situations, we've been talking about Cybersecurity, you find a lot of podcasts on that, like the ISO 21434, also functional safety, like the ISO 262662. Of course, the whole topic of process management, like ASPICE with the ISO 33000 series. But now we focus specifically on homologation and the aspect of the relationship to update management. And here we have these two standards, the UNEC R155, which is cybersecurity management system, and UNEC E156, which is about software update management system. Both are relevant. Both have a small overlap, which is how do I make, for instance, a secure update. But CSMS is about the whole security suite, therefore very much related to the ISO 21434, while the SUMS is unique in a way. It's about the software update management system. Let's peek into these two standards and their relationship. On the lower right, you see cybersecurity management system. What is it? Two things are important. We do have in the vehicle software, and I mentioned already software is critical, not only for safety, but also for privacy. We have to protect against manipulation we have to provide uh, to protect against unauthorized access to certain functions because a lot of functions are today software controlled. So here is one very specific use case. Cybersecurity has to be assured in the vehicle if you want end to end. That means from a lifecycle perspective from the initial production to the complete life in terms of updates and services maybe repair, and of course, then the end of life. But we also have a need to design for security. This is, for instance, also governed in the ISO 21434 to have design which supports cybersecurity. That means architecture, connectivity, cryptography, the insurance that we cannot manipulate neither by misuse nor by abuse, not by adding something, not by listening like the man in the middle, the attacks which are certainly aware where somebody would listen to the key fob and then replay it. Others include manipulation of data, which can be, for instance, done via, or could be done by diagnostics, yet others, by all the different ports, which are rather easily to access, 
like a LIN network in the rear mid mirror, or like an Ethernet port, a USB connection, etc., which is inside the vehicle. Also, of course, wireless connection. So that means we need processes, architecture, and organization infrastructure in the development and in the usage that is the service of any single vehicle. This is governed by what UNECE, which is a branch of the United Nations, calls the cybersecurity management system. On top of cybersecurity management system, we need also a protection of the software updates. So here we have again the need for a secure update. This is the overlap which we have here to CSMS. But on top of that, we also need to manage the updates. That means not only the distribution from a back office into the vehicle, but also inside the vehicle that, for instance, we have clear procedures, how they would be installed, distributed, authenticated, but also how the whole governance works, like how do I inform the driver about updates? How would I inform any authority which controls this vehicle that the software inside the vehicle is consistent and has not been manipulated? That could, for instance, be done by a diagnostics interface like the OBD, listening inside the diagnostic port and then retrieving the different configurations of the car in terms of software, in terms of different data, and then find out by connecting, for instance, with the OEM back office, is this software consistent? Why? Of course, on the one side, because of cybersecurity to avoid manipulation, but also to make sure that the software is really consistent with what is the hardware. And for instance, therefore prevent that we would have cars which are manipulated to drive faster, to make more noise. In other words, to violate other UNECE regulations. We talk here about regulation 155 and 156. So you can imagine there are 150 other regulations, at least in front of that, which we also have to observe. Generally, these regulations apply to all kinds of vehicles where there are software updates. That is also including vans, trucks, and buses, not just the passenger cars. And they demand governance, that is organization structure and process to ensure that these security and update management systems are in place. And they also demand to be audited so that we really go into a homologization process, which is done by authorities in different regions in different parts of the world, which are typically locally established, but accredited to do the homologization of the vehicle. And any type approval means that these different UNEC regulations have to be checked have to be demonstrated, have to be recorded prior to the type approval. Now, these two specific UNECE regulation, R155, R156, have been created over the past three years, starting in 2018. Since 1st January 21, they are effective. And now we have the need to prepare any single new vehicle to comply with these two regulations. It's mandatory from 1st July 22 for new vehicle type and from 1st July 24 for any updates. That means legacy and the respective first registration. In parallel, we also have the 21434, which I already mentioned, which is currently, which is at the date around 21 in its final review to be released in 21. And then we have a good framework with respect to cybersecurity and update management. This being said, you have now an initial overview about these regulations and the governance, that means the laws which are behind these regulations. We will have further podcasts where we dive into practical hands-on aspects of the R1554 
CSMS, Cybersecurity Management System, and R156 for the SAMS, the Software Update Management System. Stay tuned. We're going to give you more hands-on insight on these processes because we have been working with OEMs worldwide to introduce these processes. So we bring lots of practical guidance, especially also how to do it efficient, how to do it also in a way that regulation authorities would be in line. We partner with several regulation authorities to get this done. And then we can also give you best practice how to do it well and efficient. Wish you good success with your cybersecurity and stay tuned at www.vector.com slash consulting. Thank you.